Hi there. I am back inside of a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm going to be using this data set as a final motivating example on a use case that you can think of when considering value weights. The data set in particular is about car prices. It's a data set that you can find on Kaggle. And the things in this data set that you can expect are things like the type of car, the type of transmission, the brand of the car, the model of the car, some sort of interior color, color of the car, some sort of condition value. There's lots of stuff in here. But the main thing that we're interested in predicting is the selling price. That is to say, the price that the car actually got sold for. And again, I believe that these are secondhand prices. I could be mistaken. But this is an interesting regression task in general. We have all sorts of different kinds of features that we got to think about. Uh, and it is also a regression task. So to get started with a pipeline, I am ignoring a couple of columns initially. I think, for example, that the sales date doesn't matter. And there's a couple of these items that are more like an ID than anything else. So there's just only a couple of columns that I think are relevant for the machine learning. I then make a starting point of a model. I am using the table vectorizer from Scrub to deal with all the featurization. Then I am generating my X and Y pair by grabbing the columns of interest and finally grabbing the selling price, which is the thing I want to predict. I then make my train test split and I train my pipeline to get the ball rolling. Now, the thing that's of interest to me is to maybe look at the prediction output and in particular to consider what the differences are between the different brands. I'm just kind of wondering, are there a few of these brands that are easier for the model than others? And when I scroll down to a cell that's doing the group by statement and having a look at the predictive error that we see on average, then we can see that there's actually quite a bit of variance. There's a couple of brands like this Hummer over here that seems to be causing a lot of errors to happen. Uh, Jaguars also seem to have a lot of errors. And there could be all sorts of reasons for it. It could be that Hummers are just underrepresented, that we don't necessarily have a lot of data for it. That's something that could explain this behavior. Alternatively, it could also be that Hummers are just really, really expensive and that the prices just vary, and that might also explain this behavior. Depending on the use case, it can be very valuable to understand this properly. So you would have to do a good chunk of exploratory data analysis to see if you can figure that out. However, some of that reasoning also depends on the use case. And what I figured I might do just as a thought exercise is I might wonder, well, let's pretend that I want to have a very good model at predicting all of these car prices. But in particular, let's pretend that I'm building a model for a Volkswagen dealership or a secondhand car dealership that primarily has Volkswagens. Then I see this error number over here, 37,000 or so. And while I'm sure that that's not necessarily a bad performance, one thing I could wonder is, can I maybe boost this performance a little bit? And perhaps one way to get there is to use these sample weights that I've been discussing in recent videos. Sample weights allow us to give a little bit more weight to a subset of our data. And one thing that we could do is we could say, well, we still care about all the predictions out there, but these Volkswagen data points, well, if it's a Volkswagen, then for sure I want to have higher sample weights because that's a, a thing I want to focus down on. So how might you go about it? Well, if we have a data frame with training data, then we can add a new column called weights, and we can just come up with whatever function that we like that assigns a weight. In the example that you see over here, we're giving it a weight of one, if the brand is not Kia, but if the brand is a Kia car, then we're going to see a true value here, which is going to make this sum equal to two. And just to give the quickest demo of that, uh, we can see over here, we're dealing with a Jaguar that has a weight of one. And over here, we're dealing with a Kia that has a weight of two. So if I were to pass these weights down to an algorithm, using that as a sample weight, you can imagine that examples like this one would get just a little bit more weight when the model is training. It deserves to be mentioned that nothing is stopping us from being a bit more explicit. We could say, well, maybe I want to add some extra emphasis and multiply the weight factor by two. There's all sorts of wiggle room we've got over here. But the main thing that's important is that we get our weights.
And in this particular case, it's also good to show that even though we have updated our weights, if I calculate the mean, then it's not like the average weights have doubled or anything like that. We are really just applying this weight to a small subset of the entire population. Because we have a weighting factor of two here, it feels like about two and a half percent or so is getting this extra weight attached. Given that we have these weights now, what I can then do is make a new pipeline, again, do the fitting. But now I'm going to pass this sample weight down below here, and that is going to have an influence on this ridge regression that I have on the end. And in this particular case, if I were to scroll down, and if I look at the aggregation that I had before, then I can inspect the error for the Volkswagen, and in this particular case, it seems to be working. Before, I had an error of about 37, and now I seem to have an error of about 3200 or something. So I could argue that, yeah, indeed, um, we're doing a bit better here. This is an interesting use case of the sample weights once again. We have some domain knowledge that is telling us that we prefer to focus in on a certain subgroup, and you could argue that this is perhaps an interesting use case. It does come at a cost, though. It is pretty reasonable to assume that because we are slightly overfitting on the Volkswagen, that we are therefore perhaps underfitting on other kinds of brands. And there's a balance there that we want to keep in mind. But here's kind of an interesting twist. While making this video, I couldn't help myself, and I figured I would run a more proper benchmark. I was using a ridge regression, and usually I pick this model because it's nice and fast, but it's also not necessarily the most performant model. So what I figured I might do is use the histogram gradient boosted tree instead, just to see what might happen. If I look at the performance of Volkswagens using the quote unquote normal pipeline, that is the pipeline that doesn't have any strange behavior, it's just the table vectorizer followed up by a, a histogram gradient boosted tree model, then this is the mean absolute error that I get for Volkswagen cars. After that, I figured I might poke around and change the weights a bit, just to see if I could find a weight that would have a pretty big impact. When I did this exercise, I did notice that I needed to give a very strong weight for the Volkswagen cars. I needed to have a factor of 10, but I did notice that there was quite a jump down. The mean absolute error was now closer to 1000 instead of 12, 1300. But then I figured, just as an extra experiment, what happens if I take a subset? where I train a pipeline, but only on data points that are Volkswagen cars, then I would get close to 1200 mean absolute error. And I think there's something really interesting happening here. The normal pipeline wants to generalize over all the different brands that are out there, and therefore it's not necessarily super specific to Volkswagens. If we make a subset with way less data, but just only Volkswagens, then we see that we indeed get a smaller error on the test set. And that kind of makes sense. However, what we're able to do with these weights is pretty amazing if you think about it. The subset of Volkswagens isn't big. I think there's only about 200 cars or so in the train set that we can learn from. So you can definitely argue there's something general you might learn about cars that is missing. And by tuning these weights, we seem to be able to capture a nice little balance. We are able to still double down on Volkswagens and really declare that those are the important things but we are still able to learn from the other cars by picking the right balance. Getting this right definitely is a bit of hyperparameter tuning, but I do hope that you can agree that there is something you can learn from the general set of all the cars that you might be missing if you only focus in on the small subset. And this, I think, is also a very interesting use case of these value weights. You can balance some sort of a general pattern, and you can kind of equate that to a specific subset. And that tends to be pretty interesting if you think about it. And here's also where I'm going to take a step back and also say something general about this phenomenon. Because in this case, we are talking about cars and prices. And yeah, there's a use case for that. We have domain knowledge. It makes sense to consider these weights here. And in this particular case, we were talking about a subset of Volkswagens. We had a business reason to make sure that we are really not underperforming here. But let me just mention a field of machine learning here that might also be of influence. Algorithmic fairness. A large chunk of this field concerns itself with bias mitigation. The idea being that 
maybe there are subgroups within the population and you don't want one subgroup to have way better performance than another subgroup. Just to name one theoretical example, what if you have a model that performs very well on men, but very poorly on women? Hopefully you can also smell from a distance here that these value weights can also play a role here. Instead of focusing down on a single subset, we might want to pick the subsets and the value weights in such a way that the performance of the model is equal for both men and women. And the value weights kind of give us a tuning knob to do this. Now, I want to be a little bit careful here because I don't want to suggest that algorithmic fairness is a solved problem simply because we have these value weights at our disposal. That's not the way the world works. What I do hope though, and that's the main point I'm hoping to get across, is that these sample weights really give a lot of flexibility, wiggle room, and domain applications because they allow us to tune the performance of a model and map that to aspects of the data that we are more or less interested in. And that's interesting for a lot of industry use cases where you want to zoom in on a subset, but that's also interesting for algorithmic fairness and lots and lots of other disciplines because it allows you to do something with your knowledge of the world that helps you steer the algorithm in a direction that you're interested in. And that is the main point that I do hope to get across with these sample weights.